Hi everyone, hope everybody's hunky-dory, fighting fit in this mad world we live in. Now this video build uh, wasn't the one that I was expected to upload. It's still sat on the desk here, waiting to be finished. The reason for that is I was nosing around the local hobby shop and um, saw this uh, sat on the shelf, or in the corner actually, and it grabbed my attention straight away. I love things like this. And I thought I won't buy it because I've still got a model on the desk waiting to be finished. It's a rule of mine. I don't buy another model until I finish the one on the desk. So I went home and of course it started to eat away at me that uh, I should have bought that. So about a day later, I thought I'll go back. If it's there, I'll buy it. If it's not, it was meant to be. So I went back into the shop and there it was. So I bought it. Now I was gonna build this in my own time, in my own space. No table lamps, no phone cameras, no scratching my head, can I see what I'm doing as I'm filming this? None of that, I was just gonna build it without any of that hindrance. But of course, I'm here now with the video build, so that all went out the window. Which means that the intended build is still sat here <laughs> gathering dust. Um, so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, to get it finished in a week, probably two weeks, provided I don't buy anything else in between then. So enough of my oxygen wasting, uh, let's get on and see what I did with this build. So some nice colour options here. I do like the blue one. So let's take a look in the box. Nice glossy instructions. The illustrations seem nice and clear. So let's take a quick look at the uh, contents. Nicely packed etch fret. Wow, what on earth is going on here? Flashy tires, anyone? So some very nicely detailed parts is some very odd looking breakdowns. So I've cleaned all the parts up, release them from the sprues and clean them all up. Now this isn't the right approach. Just because I do it doesn't mean it's right. Now some of these parts are very delicate. And I ended up breaking some of them, just cleaning them up. I've left some of the smaller, delicate parts still on the sprue. Take them off as and when I need them. 
Uh, these parts 24 had me baffled, but what they are are actual nuts you cut off. There's three of them. Now the rear tyres took quite a bit of effort to clean up. Seam marks everywhere. So I've given them a couple of coats of Tamiya black paint just to check for any more imperfections. As for the front wheels, they come in five parts. Don't ask. Now everything is pinned, so there should be no errors in assembling these parts together. But I've had a go at dry fitting them anyway. Happy that I've got them all to seat properly, the parts. I've clamped them together and then I'm just going to run a bit of Tamiya Extra Thin down the seams. Now for the experienced modeler, as it says here, you can drill some holes in a few of the parts and add some hydraulic lines or pipes, connecting them to whatever you want to choose. I was about to do that, but as you can see here, I have trouble holding the parts, never mind drilling holes in them. So I didn't bother. So let's get on with the build and start assembling all these parts. Here I need to add two bits of etched fret. I've sanded the back of them so the super glue would adhere better to the plastic and I'm also going to roll them into shape. Doesn't take much, just a slight curve so they fit flush to the plastic part. The rear tie guards. So now I'm going to add some of the small assemblies to the main block. Now for the exhaust system, the front part fits okay, but the rear part is not the most secure fit, being held to the body by a very dainty piece of etched fret. Now this front leaf spring assembly, this is an area that needs great care. 
I have to loosely fit the front towing assembly before I can glue the pin through the lower L-shaped bracket. The hole you see there. So I've got the pin secure. I can now glue the front towing assembly to the leaf spring assembly now. A very tricky area around here and the illustration for this assembly wasn't too clear. So I've got as far as I want with the assembly and I'm going to have my first layer of paint. Now I'm not going to prime the model. I'm just going to hope for the best. So my first coat is going to be what I call a shadow colour. Black red mixed with a few drops of black. And I'm just applying in the areas that would be in shadow. Now for the main top colour, flat red, toned down with some red leather. I've mixed enough of this paint so I don't run out. So I'm going to start off by adding a few light coats underneath and then work my way around to the top. With these two coats thoroughly dry now, I want to do some dry brushing, some highlights. So I'm using this amaranth thread mixed with a small amount of dark flesh. So once I've got the colour mix, I'm going to wipe quite a bit of the excess off and then dry brush it on the highlighted areas. Next, I'm going to paint the exhaust. I'm going to use this burnt umber. It's a great colour. So I'm going to create a light wash and paint over the existing colours underneath. And thankfully, the colours already there have that rust effect already. So all I need is a couple of light washes. While I've got this burnt umber on the brush, I'm going to paint the seat. So with highlighted paint dry on the tractor, I'm going to add the very few decals that are required here. I'm going to start off with the prominent ones. Now I'm going to use this stuff, but personally I don't think I need it. Looking at the decals, they look very good and I think they'll go down without any solution whatsoever. Just going to seal everything with a varnish. So with the varnish nice and dry, I'm going to add a, a light wash. Using these colours again, but adding more dark flesh, I want to create a sun faded look. So with the application of some water, not a lot, just a small amount to the surface that I'm going to use, then adding that mix to the wet surface and using a clean damp brush, blend it in. I'll be using this colour for the mud guards and for the top of the engine cover. Now the assembly of the rear wheels is an odd approach as far as I'm concerned, very strange. But thankfully, 
hubs either side are a nice tight fit. So I'm going to add the front face of the hub first. As this is the most important part we will see. And also I've got access to both sides. So I can push and pull to get that front part flush with the tire. Once I'm happy with that, I'll add a small amount of Tamiya Thin. Now the inner hub has a pin, a locating pin that fits with the outer hub. But I'm going to take it off just in case there's any issues or any clashes with that outer hub. So I'm ready to paint the tyres on the wheels. And I'm going to use a, a mixture of Tamiya Dark Iron mix with a small amount of Tamiya Black. Thin down and give it a couple of light coats. Now I want to add a couple of washes to this tractor. I'm going to start with the underneath. I'm going to use khaki grey, thin down considerably, apply the underneath, the lower surfaces only, and then using clean water and a brush, blend it in. If the tone of this when it's dry is not right, I can always use a darker colour. So I've been messing around with a bit of burnt umber washes on the top areas and now I'm going back to the highlights again. Using this amaranth red again, just as is, and then picking out the small details. Adding the front windscreen, thankfully this is a beautiful fit, it just clips into place. Now the windscreen looks too perfect, it looks mint, nice and clear, which may be alright for an aeroplane but for a tractor I need to turn it down a bit. So I'm using watercolours mixed with a small amount of mild shower gel. With that dry and going in one direction, I'm using a chisel brush just to blend and give it some streaks. Now I like the tyres as they are, they look pretty good here, but I do need to do something using pastels to give them that used look. So I'm just giving them a light coat of a tan pastel and that's all I'll be doing.
So I'm ready to get this thing assembled and finished off. So I like this build, loved it, even with a strange approach by the manufacturer to certain areas. Thankfully, pretty good fits all around. So I hope you like the end results. I'll take some pictures and I'll hopefully see you for the next video, whatever that will be.